Hi guys, you have been waiting for that video for a very long time. This is the long-weighted ACs for Dummies part 4. Today we'll be talking about how to update the software of your BMW. In the current video I'll show you with the all greatest details from the beginning up to the end. What parts are needed, how to set up everything, what to check, not to fail. Because programming BMW is a risky process. A lot of guys are performing that not even knowing what what the hell they're doing. And if you do something wrong, you'll just bring your break your car and you'll just uh, not usable after that. So be careful. Today will be very interesting. Stay tuned. As usually, I will divide all my process into the parts. Before making anything serious to the car, part one will be always the diagnostics. I'll be using ISTA Plus to understand what, what is the state of the vehicle. Why the diagnostics is very important, because if you update the software, after that you just cannot downgrade all the ECUs. And if something was wrong with the car, you will have no idea was it before or after your update. That's why diagnostics will be always the part one. Part two will be updating the software. Today I'll be using the ACS and the newest databases to update that BMW G30. By the way, this is the plug-in hybrid, so it is not a regular. Uh, to tell you even more a bit, actually that car, why it came to the full software update, it has a small error. Its hybrid battery is charging while the car is driving, but it's unable to charge if the car is plugged in to the wall charger. And this is the issue why the client came in. On the newest G-Series, whatever is wrong with the car, Actually, if something mysterious is happening, no one will do anything until the software has been updated. Only after that, we can uh, go and see if anything is mechanically wrong with the car. Because cars are so complicated, that's why updating the software is important. And of course, after the software update, part 3 will be running the diagnostics again. And of course, in the end of the video, we will connect that car to the wall charger and we will see if that actually fixed the issue or not. If it did fix the issue, then conclusion is very simple. That was the software problem inside the car. If it did not fix the issue, it means, for example, whatever ECU is wrong, uh, not working properly, that is respons responsible for that, or actually something is mechanically wrong with the uh, power supply, with the connection of the vehicle. So that will, be, that will need more diagnostics. To update the software, very important part is using the proper power supply. I'll be using my GIS flash. That power supply is able to deliver up to 100 amperes to the car. Without additional power supply, do not even think to update the software of your vehicle. Update of the vehicle will take each one and a half up to two hours, sometimes even three hours. And believe me, the ba car battery will not last for such a long time. That's why additional power supply is a must. The most common mistake why the software update might fail is due to the wrong power supply or not using power supply at all. I had a lot of cases when the customer complains that I was doing the software update, something went wrong and car is not working anymore. So my first question is, did you use the power supply? And the answer usually is no. So always use the proper power supply. Even before running the diagnostics, we can already connect the power supply. Let's do it. Remember, I told you this is our uh, hybrid, so it is E-Drive, that's why it looks a bit different. Uh, first, you have to locate the outputs for the power supply. Red is always the plus, and over here uh, is the minus or the ground. Connecting, always connect the plus first and the minus second to avoid the short circuit. Plus first, minus second. Absolutely, make sure you have a good grip on everything. And now you can turn on the power supply itself. Different power supplies are a bit different. My GIS flash, you just turn it on. Let's put that to the side. And over here, everything is set up before that. You're pressing start. You can see the voltage is 13.9. So the optimal voltage for updating the BMW or whatever other automotive brand like Audi or Mercedes will be between 13 and 14 volts. 
and you actually can see that the car at the moment is consuming 21 amperes. When I'll turn on the ignition, the consumption will be even higher. Going into the vehicle, you can see a beautiful e-drive logo. And actually we need diagnostic mode. For that, we need to press start stop button three times. Very quickly. And actually I failed with that. Let's do one more time. One, two, three. And now you can see, if you can see the check engine on, it means the ignition is on and everything is okay. It is very good recommendation to reduce all the power consumers. So turn off your climate. And in addition to that, lights. At the moment it is bright outside. That's why automatic light is not a problem. But actually if you put to the side markers, it will consume even less power. Because the less consumers are on in the car, the less power they consume and actually your power supply will have to make less, uh, way less work and that's why you will have way more reser reserve if something goes wrong. To update the whole car, of course, you will need your uh, laptop with special Beamer Dock sticker on that. Without that update, it will not go. Uh, G-Series, I highly recommend you to update the G-Series via the Enet cable. Do not even use the ICOM. Enet cable for the G-Series will be more than enough. For F-Series, it is almost the same information. You are not allowed to update the ZGV, the central go uh, gateway model with the Enet cable on the F-Series. For that, use the ICOM. For the rest of the ECUs on the F-Series as well, Enet cable is more than enough for flashing, diagnostics, codings, and so on and so on. Now I'll establish the connection to the car. I have the power supply connected. I have pressed three times, so my ignition is on. If you don't know in what sequence you should connect, please do see my ACs for manual from part one up to part three. Over there, I'm explaining in the great details in what sequence you have to do that in, in order to succeed. So, step one, making the full diagnostics with usage of ISTA Plus and init cable at the moment. I can already see the car was produced in 2017 in July and the software in it, it is actually uh, 1911. It showed me that actually this is not the newest software of the car. Uh, the owner of that car has used, uh, so made, a, made a Google research. And actually there is a lot of topics about that, that if you have any problems with the charging of your hybrid BMW, the first thing will be update the software. Diagnostics have been done. You can see that all the issues are presented here. The green one don't have errors, yellow one they do have errors. At the moment we can see that EME, it is the electrical uh, machine electronics. This is the ECU that's responsible for our uh, electrical part of the car. And actually we can see there are some errors present in that. If you go to the fault memories, actually we can see those two errors are not active in the vehicle. We can see those occurred for the four times when the first error occurred and when the last one was occurred. And it definitely says us that uh, there are some problems with the charging. Everything else on the G series like uh, radiator blind, uh, electrical fault and so on and so on, blocked unknown. Actually on the G series, the cars are like so smart, they register absolutely every malfunction. Believe me, on my G series as well, on my G30, there was not a single time happened when I made the diagnosis to the car. Everything was green and absolutely okay. So it registers absolutely everything. For example, the uh, driver assistance camera, the CAFAS camera, you can see so lack of visibility. For example, if you are driving and it was like really heavy raining, it also registers the error. So there was not enough of visibility. That's why some errors are absolutely okay. The thing we'll do, I'll just delete all the errors. Uh, Ista Plus will delete all the errors, it will rescan the car again and we'll see the end state. And we should have exactly the same end state after updating of the software. Errors have been deleted. Only one error is present in the BBC ECU. It is body domain control. And actually you can see that remote control battery under voltage. So in the our remote key, probably this is the display key. The owner has the regular key with him. So in the display key, the battery is just uh, not charged enough. 
so it's not a big issue just battery replacement and everything else is green so it tells me that actually i can proceed with the software update of the current vehicle in addition to the diagnostics with the ISTA, also visually make sure that the car is in original state for example ask the owner if any chip tuning was done anything was replaced retrofitted and so on and so on for example carplay activated because after the software update you will restore all the factory settings you will just zero out everything you will lose all the chip tunings alpine software carplay navigation maps whatever was added uh, non-standard wise that's why it is very important to understand the state of the car so first the aces to update the software always use only the plain aces without any launchers will, will that be launcher by token master beamer utility aces plus whatever 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 do not use any add-ons because the less parts are in the chain the stronger is the chain that's why for software update do not use launcher use plain aces it is higher recommended there are also different versions of the aces available uh, which one to choose it depends with what car you're working for the software update i recommend you to use version 3.36 i have found it uh, the most stable it has uh, way less problems while updating the cars if something goes wrong, in that case I have another version of the ACES, you can do the same procedure using another ACES. So I have launched the ACES, it's open over here. The first thing you need to do is connect to the vehicle. How to connect? Again, in my previous uh, manuals for the ACES. This is our uh, G30, that's why I'm choosing that platform. Which platform to choose? Again, see ACES uh, for dummies part 1. I'm connecting with the Enet cable and pressing connect. Okay. Before updating the software, I highly recommend you just to work with the car a bit to see how the car behaves. If you ha can see any anomalies, uh, it means then just do not proceed with the uh, software update. The thing I highly recommend you to do, for example, open the coding tab yes it's only coding it's not programming but just try to code some ECU for example take climate ECU or whatever else you prefer and recode it to the factory settings if during that procedure you will see some errors it means something is wrong with the car and you have to investigate a bit more if everything goes okay this is our first check that we can proceed with a software update yes it looks like okay in addition for example let's also recode the transmission ECU also as a double check so we can see the computer communicates with the car properly yeah it looks okay so we're absolutely fine now let's proceed with the software update itself go to the comfort mode and tell calculating that tab looks very similar to the coding tab but it behaves differently First, read out the vehicle order and of course if you read out something you save it. It is G30 FA. Now read out all the ECUs. At the moment we can see we have 25 ECUs. And in the end of the update we also should have 25. In other ways we are screwed. Uh, read out. Now save the information you have read out. Uh, name it as SVT, it is System Variable Tree, and East, it's from the German, goes from the uh, actual state, what is over there. And use please the same naming convention. Why? Because all the coders and programmers around the uh, BMW coding uh, world, uh, we have, like, based not agreed, but we use the same namings. For example, if you will have in the future whatever error, you can always refer, hey guy, please send me your, those calculations, and you will understand each, each other way better. That's why it's way better to use that. So next, we need to calculate the software that will be put inside the car. For that, in calculation strategy, select complete flash. It is important. Over here, we have now two options to check from. The iStep shipment is the date of the software where, when the car was produced. It will be picked up over here automatically if you set up the connection properly. If over here you have some random stuff, uh, then you can look it up manually. How to do that? Go to expert mode. Over here, press the VCM. It is vehicle configuration manager. 
and in the master tab open up here and press read iStep. Over here you can see iStep shipment. It is the software level when the car was produced. So choose that in the previous menu. In addition to that, because we are already in that menu, you can see the iStep last and current. Current it means what software it is in the moment in the current car. And the last one, it is the previous software version. So from that one I can say that the car was produced in July 2017 and it was updated only once with those databases. After today's work, we, I will move those, that data to iStep last and over here I will read ex absolutely new information. Because ACES is engineer level software, you have to do everything manual. It will not do automatically anything for you. So let's go back to the comfort mode and uh, tile calculating. So the iStep shipment, I say again, it should be picked up automatically. If no, now you know where to look. And complete flash was already selected. Next thing, iStep target. Newest databases, they have two options to choose from. That one or that one. You can see 2023 March or 2022 November. So if you want, you can choose to which software level to update your BMW. Of course, because at the moment we try to cure out the error with the charging of the EME ECU or the hybrid station. That's why I will choose the newest one. Because newer software most likely will have less box. And you can just press calculate. Calculation of the software will take some time. It depends how much are the differences between the software in the car and between the databases that are on your computer. While your software is being updated, you have to understand to update uh, your BMW, you will need full databases, not the light one. From where to get the full databases, please see my video how to set up all the software needed to work with the BMW. You can see that video over here. The software has been calculated. Most likely you will see the SVT or system variable tree in expanded way or in that way. Now it is very important. Yes, we have done the diagnostics with the ISTA. It showed us nothing suspicious. But now actually by those calculated files, you will understand if any retrofits were done or not. So the ECUs will be colored with different colors. If whatever software is black, it means that software level in the car and on your database on the computer, it is equal. So nothing will be changed. So ACSM ECU is the ECU of the airbags. So from that picture, I can see that the ACSM ECU will be not updated. It has already the newest software. Next, the ATM, it is our telematics ECU. We can see over here are different files. The bootloader uh, marked with BTLD coding file and different SVFL or software files. The blue one is the one that is at the moment in the car, in the ECU. The red one is the one that is on our computer and it will be updated too. Over here you can see, for example, the first part of the bootloader, 26A2, it is exactly the same one as over here. The next portion is 001, it's exactly the same. But over here you can see 042, it's the version in the car at the moment and it will be updated to 0.43 or a bit newer. So by that you can see the difference. So what else can I see from those calculated files? So first, BTLD or bootloader is the part of the software that is responsible for the ECU to start operating at all. So if during the update process something will go wrong during the bootloader deployed in, the ECU will not respond after that. It will crash and you will break that ECU. So deployment of the bootloader is critical part and it is uh, most dangerous. Uh, CAFT is the coding file. It is absolutely okay. For example, on the E-series, you had to program your BMW within KFP first and then code it with the NCS expert. In the ACs, you can do everything at once. That's very convenient. Next, very important. The, you can see uh, uh, HW, this is, it goes for the hardware and it is very important in all the ECUs, if your hardware is not black, if it's colored in blue or red, it is bad. So only the black is good over here. If it's not black, your update 
for that ECU will not go through and you will fail. About that, how to update those ECU that, uh, that have different hardware than those, I'll make another ACs for Dummies video. If you support my channel well with a subscription and also hitting the like and a lot of the comments and so on. So that, that's actually a very interesting topic, how to update the retrofitted ECUs. It is not as straightforward. There are some parts over there. So that's why in every single ECU check if the hardware is black or not. And those SVFL, the same principle as for the bootloader, you can actually see it will be updated to the next version. The higher is the difference between the numbers, it means uh, the more updates it will be clued, so it will be the, just another version. And in the same way, you have to check all the ECUs. For example, the BDC body, it is the ECU that's responsible for the car keys and for the security. If something goes wrong with that, the car will not, st not start after that anymore. So you can see the bootloader will be updated, so it is dangerous process. And all, all our HV, HW files are black, so it means that that BDC is not retrofit, it has not been changed, so it's used that vehicle perfectly, so it is okay. Now, just scroll down and see all the differences. For example, D combi is our digital combi or our cluster, everything is black, it means the cluster has already the newest software and not going to be updated. The engine ECU, we can see the bootloader uh, is black, so bootloader will be not updated, but the software itself will be updated over there. It means some changes will be applied and actually that's good. Uh, dynamical stability control, DSC, also bootloader not updated, rest of the issues are updated. For example, Gearbox has already the newest software, it will be not updated. And in the same way you will go through everything. The thing I definitely wanted to see is that EME, this is our electrical model electronics, and over here we can see there are some differences to be applied there and this is exactly what we want to achieve. If for example in that software we will have EME everything black and our engine ECU also everything black, it means no updates will be deployed to the, uh, those ECUs and for that vehicle the update would be useful. But at the moment we have a small chance to succeed. And just look through all the ECUs. If everywhere the hardware part is black, it is very good sign that car is in original state. Just scanning through all the ECUs. Yes, I see no problems with that car, we can proceed with the software update. So those calculations, we haven't saved those yet. Press save and again the same naming convention save those as SVT Sol and now we still have to make one more calculation it will be the TAL calculation TAL goes for transaction list we just press over here TAL calculation and then save and again to the desktop SVT down slash TAL it is transaction list press save and actually now we have made all the preparations to update the vehicle software. Let's continue. Go to the expert mode, tile processing. Over here you have to load those needed files. The first one is tile or transaction list. Obviously you can open it and guess which one from those three you need to put there. Of course transaction list, SVT tile. Highly recommended unclick, uncheck all the ECUs. Why? Because if by accidentally you will hit start before you made sure everything is okay, the update of the vehicle will start and if something is wrong, for example, power is not running to the car, the update will fail in the middle of the process. So that's why definitely uncheck those. It is highly recommended. Next one will be SVT target. You open the SVT sol file over there and FA goes for our vehicle order and load your vehicle order. And actually if I hit the start, the update will start. Before that, parameters in that tab leave parallel programming on and programming for switchable ECUs also on. Why it's needed? If parallel programming is off, the ECUs will be updated one by one and it will take ages. If it is on, 
all the issues will be updated simultaneously. That's definitely the thing we need. And actually now, if we press all and press start, the update of all ECUs will begin. Before that, always make sure that your ignition is still on, because on G-Series it might go off just by itself. Also go to the power supply, check if the power is running into the vehicle. If no, do not start with the update, otherwise you will fail. Also physically check all the connections, because number two issue uh, where guys are failing is just physically not connecting the car. For example, the OBD output was just put loose there and it just goes, falls off the vehicle and that's it. So please check all those connections. And one more precaution, before you are going to update the vehicle, always, I say again, always open the trunk. Why you should open the trunk? Because one of the batteries on the vehicles, where a lot of batteries, is inside the trunk. And if something goes wrong with the vehicle and is being stuck in the transport mode or the programming mode, your not, not a single button in the car will work. And that's why you will not have access to the car battery. And getting over there will be just a huge, just huge headache. That's why I open it first. So most likely you will not need that. But if something goes wrong, believe me, it will save your time. Very important part about working with the e-drive vehicles, you can see over here, it shows you have 11 kilometers remaining of the battery charge. And why it's important to understand that? Let's go to my power supply, I'll show you. So, have a closer look at the power supply. My ignition is turned on. You can see the car consumes actually 14.2 volts, but amperes are in zero. So it means no current is going into the car. Why so? It is because it is e-drive vehicle. At the moment, it is consuming the power, not from my power supply, but actually from the car itself, even if it is in diagnostic mode. But when you press start programming, the car will be put from diagnostic mode to transport mode. And over there, it will start using the power from the power supply, not from the car itself. That's why updating the vehicle will be done through external power supply, not internal resources. Now when I have checked physically all the connections, power supply, open the trunk, I can start with the update of the vehicle. Because we are going to update the whole vehicle, we can press select all and hit the start button. The update will start. So I have pressed the start, the whole vehicle will be updated. Absolutely, make sure that you don't have any CDs in the drive. It's also good to take out all the USBs from the uh, vehicle before hitting the start button. Calculation, calculated time shows 52 minutes. My worst experience was updating NBT EVO, the head unit. The calculation showed also one hour, but actually it could last for four days. Why four days? Because the wrong, wrong protocol was used. Uh, and actually, I have been updating the NBT EVO, the bootloader part, for 22 hours. After that, when the next software part started coming in, I cancelled the process. That's why it was very good that my trunk was open. I was able to reset the vehicle, change the protocols, and then the NBT EVO updated in one hour. If something goes wrong with the protocols, that's why you need to open the trunk. Which protocol will be used? Actually. You can determine it by the speed. You go to task manager, you can open performance. And actually over here, you should see the network, network card that I don't see at the moment. Okay, here it is. And by sending data. At the moment, it is sending only in kilobytes because we're still flashing the uh, BDC gateway ECU, it is absolutely okay. But when the update of the NBT EVO will begin, the speed should be in megabytes. If it's not in megabytes, we are screwed. And at the moment, actually, there is nothing else we can do. If your laptop battery is not good enough, absolutely feel free to connect the power supply to the laptop also. 
And now we have only two scenarios. We will drink coffee for one hour and just wait until the process has finished. Or the second scenario, today we'll have no time for the coffee. We'll be fighting with the tweakle, trying to rescue that. The ECUs are updated in the certain sequence. The sequence is selected by ACs by itself. Actually, the first one will always will be the gateway. After that, the rest of the ECUs and the last one will be the uh, BDC, the body domain control. From our task manager, I can see that the speed is in megabytes. So it means that we are already good. Uh, everything goes as it should go. And calculated time is still 50 minutes. So just leave the computer for 50 minutes. Of course, I will be not recording uh, all that process because you can actually do nothing good about that. You can make things only worse. Just make sure nothing happened with the vehicle nor the power supply and just have some coffee. Software update is still running. All ECUs except the NVT EVO or our head unit were updated. So at the moment it is 46%. So it just takes some time. There is nothing you can improve over here. You can only make things worse. Just be patient. So the software update has been finished. It took a bit longer than expected. Usually it takes one and a half up to two hours. That time it took three hours. It's because um, our update speed was maximum 10 megabytes per second. It should be updating ish uh, 70, up to 70 megabytes per second with uh, such a speed. But at the moment, its speed was reduced. I have no idea why. If any of the subscribers do have idea why it could happen, please write it in the comment. It happens not so often, but sometimes it's happened. And that's why the update takes a bit more time. So if you know the answer, uh, please feel free to write it in the comment. But now have a look to the screen. Uh, you can see so um, execution successful finished everything is okay and actually the update took uh, two hours 19 minutes so actually not as bad now i always recommend go to coding tab and before we have seen 25 ecus you press read ecu again and at the moment it shows 21 because the ignition is off i'm turning on the ignition again and reading out the ecu it's 25. It means every single ECU is responding. That's very good. Last thing we need to do while we're still connected in the ACES. Remember, I told you the ACES is engineering level software. It doesn't do anything on the background by itself. We need to write into the card the information that it has newer software now. For that, remember that. So we were updating the car to the software level 2303-540. So we go to the VCM, it is Vehicle Configuration Management Manager in the Expert Mode. And over here you can see those steps. So we are writing here 20th correction. Before I delete that one, just copy the current and paste it in the last. Because this is the last I step. And now actually we can replace it. So it will be 23. 03 and 540. Before writing that to the vehicle, check again what database did you have? 23, 03, 540. This is correct. And press right I step. Down left over here you can see I step is written. You can just read it out again, for example. And you can see so this is the new I step of the car. So our step two programming the whole vehicle is finished now let's connect with the diagnostic software with the ista plus again and let's read out the vehicle we will have a lot of errors in the car we'll erase those it depends what uh, ecus you have in the car and what ecus were updated you would need to run a different type of initializations for example if we were updating the airbag ecu our airbag light will be constantly flashing it means the airbag have to be locked and so on and so on and so on. It depends of the type of the vehicle you are working with. But ISTA will do majority of that without any problems. ACs cannot do that. So we are disconnecting from the ACs, starting the ISTA plus again, making the diagnostics, deleting all the errors, making all the initializations, and we are done. Beginning is exactly the same, complete identification, and let Easter do its job.
and while the ISTA is still reading out the errors because there are a lot of errors in the car after software update it is okay pay attention to that blue 8 over here I have the diagnostics mode activated you can see it from the check engine light is running and actually engine is not working my power supply is of course connected but now vehicle takes the power from the internal battery this is the specific of e-drive you will not see that effect on the regular BMWs either gasoline or diesel powered this is just a specific of the e-drive it's just is as it is you have to know how it's working but anyway additional power supply is must for programming the vehicle diagnostics has been done just have a look how many errors do you have in the car 239 errors and actually it is absolutely okay because during the programming the ECU it just loses the connection with other ECUs and that's why every single ECU writes a record that it has missing communication with other ECUs and so it's absolutely okay so just press, press uh, display fault memory and actually the first thing you need to do just delete all the errors there is no point to look those through and only after deleting those errors we can run several initializations that would be needed the most typical initialization that need to be done after reprogramming the airbag ECU uh, locking that so it will work properly if you're updating the BDC ECU sometimes uh, learning function of the window uh, is also needed so the window actually do recognize where is the upper and the lower position if you have uh, a dynamic suspension a dynamic drive sometimes learning of the DSC ECU is needed so you initialize all the sensors and so on and so on and so on if you make software update with the ISTA plus it will make those, all those automatically but if you do it with the ACs you have to do those manually at the moment we can see that almost all errors are gone except one I can see in our EME this is our electric electric motor ECU so at least one error is present there and we will see what is that uh, it tells us uh, fault during charging procedure I guess it is absolutely okay at the moment because we are connected to the uh, 12 volt output system under the hood it's not the way how the high voltage system of the car is meant to be charged it's meant to be charged from the side of the car that's why that kind of error is okay at the moment so I will tell that actually no any other initialization is needed I'll disconnect the power supply we'll go to the gas station we have the power supply over there we'll connect it to the car and see if it's working or not and as, as usually I prefer to do I'll hide some very important detail inside of the video not in the beginning or in the end and this part is now remember I told you that most common errors during the programming of the vehicle happens if you have bad power supply or no power supply at all or you disconnect uh, the cable uh, mechanically uh, physically actually and actually the th number three case while all the errors could happen you are using not the BMW original software or hardware for example if you're using some kind of um, multi-mark uh, scanners like Altel or whatever for example some of those also do have the possibility to update the software of the BMW but please do not do that believe me for example in nine cases out of ten those multi-mark scanners will update the software absolutely okay but the tenth case will be such a hu huge headache for you you'll just break the car and in the end you will anyway need the ACs to recover the car so update BMWs only with the use of the ACs or ISTA plus no any multi-mark scanners or even uh, BMW VVDI BMW tool beam tool pro or however it's called it also has the ECU update function but do not update with that I have made some tests on the bench and whatever multi-mark scanners I have used sometimes they just break the ECU and sometimes they break it so bad that just replacement of the ECU is needed I have disconnected the power supply I have started the vehicle I drove it just one meter back and one meter forward I run the diagnostics again delete all the errors and now actually you can see on your screen everything is green no errors everything is super fine now is the moment of truth let's go uh, 
let's make some short test drive, go to the charging station and let's try if it was a fix or further investigation is needed. So guys, we have arrived to the station where we can get the electricity, but actually you will not believe it, but just today for two hours they are on the maintenance. So that's why those electrical chargers, they are just not working. I will not hold up my client uh, just for two hours to, to test it, no problem. So I'll finish my video over here. Thank you for watching that and see you next time. Bye. And of course, the video will be not complete without the final test. So I just, just asked the owner, so he'll perform his own test, record for me the video. You'll see that in a second and over there we'll see was that success or no. I'm also very, very interested. I really hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time. Stay tuned.